Thank you. Oh, it sounds so weird. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Bryn Martin. Um, I'm a senior at Grandview University. And um, yeah, I'm going to share with you guys the story of how God um, has transformed my life. So um, first I'm going to pray. So if you want to bow your heads with me. Um, Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are, Lord. I thank you for what you've done. Um, I thank you that you are Lord um, and that when we were least deserving, Lord, you pursued us. Um, when we were dead in our sin, you sent your son to die for us, God. Um, thank you for saving me and for restoring my relationship with you, um, for allowing me this opportunity to share what you've done, God. I pray that, um, yeah, you would work in people's hearts, um, that anyone who doesn't know you would come to know you, and um, that you would receive all the glory. So um, I just lift this up in your name. Um, amen. So yeah, um, I grew up going to church in Independence, Iowa with my parents and my little sister. Um, on Sundays at church, I heard the gospel and what Jesus had done for me, but it never truly clicked. Um, doodling during the service was a lot more important than listening to what was being said. Um, I also grew up with a very incomplete understanding of the gospel. Um, through the church, I heard that Jesus died for my sins, and because of that, I'm saved and I will get to go to heaven when I die. Um, the idea of humility before God or a personal submission to his lordship um, was never presented to me. I didn't realize that Jesus paid everything for me and because of that I owe him everything in return. Um, the Lord really started to work in my heart the summer before my freshman year of high school. I went on my first mission trip to Nashville, Tennessee. My youth group and I played with children at a refugee apartment complex. Um, I was surrounded by followers of Christ, and my mind was blown. I wanted whatever they had, but I didn't think that I could actually grasp it. Um, the message of that first week was, how much does it cost? And the scripture that we focused on was John 15, 13, which says, um, no one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. So basically, the focus of the mission trip was acknowledging that following Christ doesn't just require a couple hours every Sunday, but it costs your entire life. I struggled with that truth and convinced myself I could do things my way, that I could live my life half in, half out for a while, until I decided that I wanted to devote everything to him. Throughout high school, I claimed that I was a Christian, but in reality, never even knew what being a Christian meant. I had a sinful heart with lots of idols, but I was blinded to them in many ways. I was involved in all of the extracurriculars, I got good grades, and I was dating the star athlete at our school. I did all of the right things for all of the wrong reasons. I looked for my worth in my reputation and in the opinions of others, my parents, my friends, my boyfriend. I took all of the classes that my mom told me to. I went to every extra volleyball workout so that my dad didn't think less of me. I stayed in an unhealthy relationship for far too long because everyone said we were the perfect couple. I went out to parties with my friends because that's the environment I grew up in. I was willing to change myself at the drop of a dime to fit into the cookie cutter shape that someone wanted me to be. I convinced myself that the life I was living was honoring to the Lord. I went on all these mission trips in the summers. I went to church and youth group. I had seen him reflected in the lives of other Christians that I'd met. And I had even seen the work that he had done in my life. So what was holding me back? I was terrified of the idea of changing and the people that I'd grown up with not liking how I looked. I knew that if I truly laid down everything, I would lose friendships and endure more change than I wanted at the time. It just seemed too hard. My senior year of high school, I began taking more steps of faith, um, reading my Bible and getting together with a friend or two once in a while, but in public, I was still living to please my friends and family and not the Lord. I kept my faith private behind closed doors and prayed for community like I had experienced in Nashville. Um, all I wanted in college was to find a big group of Christians who loved Jesus and genuinely pursued him with their lives. The Lord answered my prayers more than I could have imagined. Um, I last minute decided to attend Grandview University, and my first day on campus I met Shelby Berg, who is now some Janelle. Um, Caleb Thompson made me a pancake. And I was invited to Walnut Creek Church. Um, immediately, I got involved with Campus Fellowship. I then looked at my current situation, and I realized that there was nothing holding me back from following the Lord. My parents were hours away, 
My best friends had dispersed to other colleges, and I had no more excuses to make. I could take a step back and ask who was really in control of my life. After reading my Bible about idolatry, I realized that I wasn't even in control. I had taken other people in my life, and I had made them my gods. I prayed that the Lord would give me a heart that cares more about what he thinks of me and not the people around me. I still struggle with idolatry and pride. I have to remind myself daily that my worth is found in the finished work of Christ on the cross and that my identity is in him and not the things of the world. But the Lord has transformed my heart, and for that I'm so grateful. Through CF, I gained not only a community of friends, but brothers and sisters in Christ. I started to follow the examples of the wise men and women around me, and through them I've learned so much. Um, I can't pinpoint an exact time that I gave my life to Jesus, but I can say with complete confidence that he has it now. One day, the Bible with the tiny text and the confusing words actually started to make sense. Um, the Lord blessed me with clarity to understand what he wanted to show me in his word. The weight of the gospel finally sunk in, and I truly realized why following Christ costs your entire life. Every single one of us here is sinful, imperfect, and broken. And because of that, there is no way that we, in our own power, could ever be connected to a holy, infinite, and perfect God. We deserve judgment, but instead, through his abundant grace and loving kindness, God has offered us eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God. That's insane. <laughs> Jesus lived the perfect life that we cannot. He was betrayed and tortured and bore the weight of all of our sin on the cross, and then he resurrected three days later, proving that he is in fact the Son of God. He loved us so much that he willingly died for us while we were still dead in our sin. He has taken our stained and dirty hearts, and he has made them white as snow. And now, not only has he purchased the offer of salvation for all of humanity, but we as Christians actually get to know and have a relationship with our creator. It says in The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer that man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Through a humble heart of repentance and belief in Christ, we can experience the everlasting life, peace, joy, and contentment offered to us through him. He takes our idol-making factory hearts of stone, and he softens them into hearts of flesh. He extends an abundance of grace. He removes our fear, and he shows us that the world is not our home. He has given each one of us a mission to follow him to the end of our days. He calls us to something greater than anything that this world has to offer, and that is the advancement of his kingdom. 2 Corinthians 5 also says, And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Once our eyes are opened to these wonderful truths, what should our response be? We should want to run and shout this good news from the rooftops. Um, we're called to share it with the rest of the world, even if it means getting funny looks from your family or losing friendships even if it means sacrificing your comfortability and your preferences and your pride. We are called to go out into this broken world and glorify God with our lives and make disciples. A heart that I think all Christians should desire to emulate is that of Paul in Acts 20, 24 that says, But I do not account my life of any value, nor is precious to myself, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So yeah, that's my testimony. Um, if you guys have any questions um, or want to talk, please come find me afterward, and I would love, love to talk to you.